Well, good morning again, everybody. As you, as you finish greeting your neighbors, and I will also echo what Pastor Gary said: Happy Mother's Day. There are lots of moms here. My mom is not present, so I'll just say Happy Mother's Day to all of you moms. And in proxy, you can tell her later if she ever comes to visit. So I'm a good son. I did say Happy Mother's Day, okay? But I hope you are glad to be here this morning. I hope you're glad to join in worship this morning. So here's what we're going to do. Are you glad to be here, yes or no? Very, very good. That was, that was a resounding yes. Let's prove it. All right, if God's grace is enough for us this morning, let's sing of it and let's worship him today. So here we go.
Pastor Usher has come at this time. We receive our morning offering. This is our opportunity to give back to God a portion of what He's given to us. It always, always a wonderful time of worship. It should be as we think about the week and think about all that God has done for us, you know, how good He's been to us. It's just a natural thing, isn't it, to want to give back to Him. We come in, we give our praise and sing the songs and we pray and we think together, but also give back to Him a portion of what He's given to us. So this is our opportunity. We appreciate uh, God giving us this, this today. As our ushers are, are ready, brother, would you come and offer our off toward prayer? Good morning. Let's pray. Father, Lord, we just um, are just so thankful for a time when we can uh, just pause and uh, just show up appreciation, Lord, to. Uh, the mothers with us today, Lord, the, the ones that, um, that teach and guide our children, the ones who watch after their families. And Lord, we just uh, love them and thank them for what they do. And Father, we love you and thank you for what you do for us, all the provisions you give for us. And uh, Lord, we just want to take this time to give back to you because you've given so much to us. And we ask it in Jesus' name. just being proud of me for actually saying it. For holding me so tight and for letting me go. And for being the example I needed when it was finally my turn. It's one of those things that obviously, you know, words can express sometimes how much we appreciate what our moms have done for us. And, and we, we, th we all probably could tell a story, probably, some things that our mom had done. But the truth of the matter is, is that obviously we celebrate our moms today. We celebrate, it's a whole day celebrating moms. Hopefully you'll get some Kentucky Fried Chicken on the way home if you don't know how to cook. Or hopefully you've cooked a meal or something, I don't know. But more importantly, we obviously have come here this morning to celebrate moms, but we came to worship our God this morning. That's the reason we're here. And so as much as we love our moms, our God loves us immeasurably more. And hopefully we will return some of that back to him. So this morning as we continue our worship, let's stand together and let's sing to that God. You are my strength when I you are the treasure that I see. You are my only love. Seeking you as a precious stone, for to give up I'd be a fool. You are my only love.
exalted him, Jesus, and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee will bow and every tongue should confess that Jesus is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. This morning we sing to that Jesus. We sing of the name that is worth this world. It's the treasure that we seek. So as we prepare our hearts for the word of God, let's sing this one last time. Jesus, name above all names. Let's sing with the scriptures. One last time. Here we go. Jesus, name above all. Dear God, this morning, I thank you that the name above all names, Jesus Christ, is our Savior and Lord. I thank you that he came, that while we were yet sinners, he died on that cross for our sins. But Lord, I thank you even more so that our God is not dead. Our God is alive. He rose from the grave so that we could have eternal life. And this morning, I pray that the songs that we sing, the offerings that we give, the word of God as it's spoken, Lord, would all allow us to draw closer to the God who loves us, to the God who cares us, cares for us. Lord, as our mothers have in our lives, far more so, our God cares for us this morning. Thank you for being the name above all names. And in that name we pray, in the name of Jesus, our blessed Redeemer, we pray. Amen. Have a seat this morning. Why? Should I feel discouraged? Why should the shadows come? Why should my heart be lonely and long? you 
Appreciate Mary Ann sharing with us this morning. What a blessing. If you have your Bibles this morning, I'll be looking at Titus and then at uh, 1 Samuel, if you want to be turning there. As we think together this morning about what's a mother to do. Now, of all of you this morning, I was blessed to have the best, most ideal mother. (laughs) You know, I was quite a bit older when I began to realize that Indeed, she did have some flaws, and I also realized that the good aspects of my mother uh, were not just inherent in her, but others had influenced her. Others had helped her along the way to become the good mother that she was. And so this morning, I realized that most of you here today are um, past uh, actually caring for children, probably uh, the majority of you this morning. Uh, you know, are are done with that. Some of you are still actively involved. But I want you to uh, pay attention if you're a a mother that's actively uh, involved with raising children or perhaps a grandmother that's still influencing children. uh, I'll be sharing some things that I want you to pay attention to this morning. But also for those of you that are past, you know, actively uh, being involved, I want you to realize that you have a tremendous opportunity to influence those that are still active. You can uh, draw alongside them and help them in a tremendous way. In Titus chapter 2, verses 3 through 5, Paul wrote to Titus to instruct uh, the women in the church. And he said, Likewise, teach the older women to be reverent in the way they live, uh, not to be slanders or addicted to much wine, but, look what he said, but to teach what is good. Then they can train the younger women to love their husbands and children, 
to be self-controlled and pure, to be busy at home, to be kind, and to be subject to their husbands, so that no one will malign the Word of God. So the Apostle Paul, as he wrote to Titus, he was aware that uh, older women have a tremendous opportunity and responsibility to teach the younger women. You know, mothers today, I think, have um, a tremendous opportunity to influence our world. You know, if they're a godly mother, they can make a tremendous difference in our world today. So uh, as I talk about what's a mother to do, I hope that you will uh, pay attention to that and uh, take some of these things to heart. You know, many women today, uh, unfortunately, give little thought to um, raising a child, thinking about what, uh, what, what are they really going to be as a mother. Uh, sometimes when uh, ladies have not planned, you know, children just come along and they, they don't think a whole lot about it. I think adoptive mothers probably give more thought to uh, the child that's coming and what does, do they want the child to be and all of those kind of things. But, you know, regardless of whether you're a, a mother who gives natural birth or you're an adoptive mother this morning, you know, there's all kinds of competing philosophies that uh, you're going to have to be dealing with as you think about uh, this child that you have and how are you going to raise this child. Certainly, uh, things that uh, come to mind is are you going to devote yourself to making the child successful? Are you going to uh, try to make them environmentally uh, conscious uh, as a child? Or perhaps are you going to uh, spend time trying to guide them toward God? Or are you going to be a mother who decides, well, I'm just not going to give them any direction at all, let them self-actualize? You know, there's all kinds of competing philosophies. You as a mother are going to have to decide how are you going to deal with this child uh, that you have to, to raise before God? But even if you deal with those things, then there's the mother uh, herself. <laughs> she, you know, a, as a mother, you have to deal with some issues regarding yourself as well. You know, am I willing to devote myself uh, to the needs of this child? Am I willing to do all it's going to take uh, to develop this child? Um, should I? You know, uh, you may ask the question, not only uh, can I, but should I uh, give that kind of time to uh, raising the child? So there's all kinds of uh, issues. You know, I'm going to put my life on hold till this child gets out of the home. All those kind of things. A lot of questions revolve around that question, what's a mother to do? And so this morning, I think Hannah's uh, words that are recorded here in, in 1 Samuel chapter 1, uh, verses 27 uh, and, and 28 this morning are instructive for us as we think about what's a mother to do. Hannah, uh, it's recorded in the scripture, 1 Samuel uh, 1, She said, I prayed for this child, and the Lord has granted me what I ask of him. So now I give him to the Lord for his whole life. He will be given over to the Lord, and he worship the Lord there. Let's pray together. Father, we want to thank you this morning for an opportunity to be here on Mother's Day. We thank you for each of these mothers that are here today. and Pray that somehow that they will hear you today, that they will hear your word. And Lord, uh, many of them will be affirmed in what they're doing, but some will be challenged, uh, Father, to, to go in new directions. But uh, I just pray that you will speak to each and every one of them today, but not only to the mothers that are here today, but Father, may each of us, uh, be conscious of the fact that you're God and we're here in your presence today. And I know that even as I speak to mothers specifically today, you will be speaking to each of us. So, Father, help us to have receptive uh, ears. May we be hearers. May we not only be hearers, but be willing to do what you impress upon us today. And, Father, especially as we come to the invitation time, just lead us in what you would have us do. Have your will and way in this service now is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, this morning, as we think about this question, what's a mother to do, there's a number of points, three points I want to share with you today about what mothers should do as we think about how uh, God would have you to deal with your children today. The first thing that comes to my mind is that Christian mothers are under obligation to parent their children as God instructs. I want to say to you this morning that if you're a Christian mother, if you're here this morning and you call yourself a Christian, you're a believer in Jesus Christ, somewhere along the way, you realize that Jesus died on the cross for you. He's God's son. He's the savior of the world. One day he's coming again. You have an obligation as a Christian mother to seek out how does God want you to uh, raise this child and to try to uh, follow God's instruction 
in, in raising the child. If you're not willing to do that, really this morning, you ought to renounce the fact that you're a Christian. You ought to say, no, I'm not a Christian. I, I no longer hold that belief. If you're not willing to seek out what God wants you to do. But hopefully this morning, as a Christian mother, you realize God is on the throne. He's the creator. He's in charge of all things. He knows what's best, and He's provided instruction here in His Word. And you will begin to seek out uh, what does God want. As we look at the scripture here in 1 Samuel, we see that, that Hannah, the mother of Samuel, realized that her, her son Samuel, that as God had given her this son, that it came with an obligation. It came with a responsibility to God. And so she brings him back. She had promised God that she was going to give him back to the temple, and she followed through on what she had promised. So this morning, as we see Hannah realizing that a child comes with responsibility to God. Hopefully this morning each of you as mothers this morning will think about what am I to do? And you will realize that you need to go to God's word and seek how would he have you to raise that child. So as we think about that question this morning, what has God instructed? You know, how do we determine what God wants us to do? How God would have us to raise the child? Well, we can look at the Bible. We can uh, check it out, uh, look for what does the Bible say about how to raise the child? We can spend time in prayer and as the Holy Spirit deals with us, we can uh, listen to Him and He will guide and direct in many of these issues. You can seek counsel from uh, other uh, mothers that have produced a successful product. You know, and when I talk about a successful product, I'm talking about a child that uh, recognizes God, a child that has given their life to God, a child that's becoming what the scripture would indicate God would have the child to be. You know, there's a lot uh, to be learned today from mistakes. I've certainly made a lot of them and continue to make mistakes. And, and there's a lot uh, to learn from mistakes. But when I look for help on something, when I want to uh, know what direction to go, I want to look to uh, someone who has been successful. Someone has, has accomplished what they set out to do. And so I would encourage you this morning that as we think about what's a mother to do, if you're here and you have uh, children at home and you're still involved in raising them, or if you're a grandparent and you're uh, actively involved in, in directing those children, I would encourage you to talk with other people who have developed a successful product and, and ask them about what they're doing and why do they do the things they do. It will be helpful as you look to God's Word, as you pray, as you seek counsel, God will begin to instruct you. In Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6, the Scripture says, Train a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not turn from it. And I know there's a lot of people that question that, but that's God's word this morning. And I think there's uh, awesome truth in that, that when we commit ourselves to being what God wants us to be and doing it the way he says, he will look over it. He will help in a tremendous, tremendous way. So a Christian mother's first responsibility as we think about what is, what's a mother to do is to instruct her children in the ways of God. Uh, there's some things that you need to teach them. I, I believe a, a Christian mother this morning, uh, as she thinks about that question, what am I to do? Well, you have a responsibility to teach that child to be what God wants you to be. You need to teach the child to love, uh, to love one another, to love God, uh, to love themselves. That's a responsibility. The Bible teaches that. I think you need to teach uh, the child to value life. Uh, you need to be constantly trying to help them to understand how important life is and to value life. Certainly you want to uh, direct them in esteeming God, uh, to recognize Him, to fear Him, to look to Him for direction. Uh, also to work. Uh, I, I believe a work ethic is important. I believe the Bible uh, teaches. The Apostle Paul said uh, that we are to work. And so as a mother, I think you need to instill within your child uh, a desire to work, a, a desire to be self-disciplined. Uh, the Bible teaches that. You know, it's amazing to me, as I've, uh, I studied Master Life, and we were talking about that recently, um, one of the things that they pointed out is so few people are internally motivated. In other words, self-discipline. Uh, so many people respond to what we call a carrot and stick kind of thing. You know, they're either punished or rewarded, and that's what motivates them to do what they do. That shouldn't be as Christians. 
you know, we should have a relationship with Jesus Christ and we want to be pleasing to Him. We want to do what He would have us to do. And so we're self-disciplined. We're internally motivated. We want to be like Jesus. And so where does that come from? I think part of that comes from a mother instructing their children and, and working with them to be self-disciplined. You know, a, a mother needs to try her best to develop in the child kindness, uh, to seek justice, uh, how, how awesome that would be if, if children were concerned about justice, the right and wrong of things. Uh, you should be uh, working with them to be honest. Uh, think about what a different world this would be if mothers really tried to instill these things in their children. Uh, so this morning, as, as I look at the scripture and, and I think about that question, what's a mother to do? I believe one of the first obligations that mothers have and I say this with all sincerity, you need to commit yourself to teaching those children what God would have them to know. You need to instruct them in the ways of the Lord. And so you can look at the Word, look in, in prayer, talk to God about it, you can talk to others, but you need to make it your desire to try to help them become what God wants them to be. Secondly, as we begin to think about, well, okay, what's a mother to do? Uh, another thing that comes to mind, mothers are to envision what the child will become. As you think about instructing them, mothers, I believe you need to spend some time envisioning uh, wh what do I want this child to become? Uh, you know, biblical names, you may recall, biblical names were often uh, almost a prophecy of what the child would become. In biblical times when they named a child, it would almost become whatever it was that they named them. Uh, I think what's being said there is that from the beginning, you should have uh, the end result in mind. As you think about this child coming forth, you know, what do you want the child to be? Uh, what do you see for this child? Uh, there's an old adage that says, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. And so in other words, uh, if you have no destination in mind, any direction will do. Well, you know, as a mother, you certainly don't want to be like that. Janice and I, when we, we had our two daughters, uh, we were very conscious of names, and we named them with an awareness of what their names meant. And, and it's scary, honestly, how they turned out uh, to be so true. So that doesn't mean, having said that, it doesn't mean that you impose on them uh, your will. I'm not talking about trying to decide for them what occupation that they'll have or where they shall live or, or if they should marry uh, or who they would marry, all those things. I'm not talking about that. Uh, that obviously would be wrong, I, I think, as a parent to try to put that kind of uh, impression upon the child. You want them to, to be their own person. But on the other hand, I think you as a parent have a responsibility to be involved in character formation, uh, to help them to choose their values. In other words, what's important to them, what, what they believe is right. And, and you need to help them to become that mature, functioning uh, adult with the ability to be all God wants them to be. That is your responsibility, not to tell them exactly what to do, but to help them become a fully functioning person that's committed to God. Believe it or not, you know, how you see the child will greatly influence what that child becomes. Are you aware this morning that most of what we do, most of what we communicate to to everyone, but especially to our children, is on a subconscious level, it's sort of automatic. You realize that? You know, it's not so much specifically what you're telling them as what they're observing from you, what they see every day, what they, uh, the attitude you have, the, the way you respond to the things they do. You know, you want to be, uh, have a vision of where you want them to be and, and that be real for you in order that your subconscious body language and your automatic responses will be consistent with that, that vision. In other words, you know, if, um, if you say, well, I, you know, I, I don't particularly have a vision for, for my child, then a lot of times, I'm going to be honest with you, that's probably not a good vision. Uh, if, you, if you think about what, what do I want this child to become and you really have in mind you're going to be communicating that in all kinds of ways. Let me give you some examples. If you, um, if you are saying to a child, 
uh, constantly things like through your body language, through the responses to what they say. You're communicating to them that you think the child is, is stupid or you think the child is ugly uh, or you think the child is promiscuous, uh, maybe uh, scatterbrained or undependable, and you say, well, why would any parent do those kind of things? Believe me, as a pastor, I have witnessed again and again parents who subconsciously say things that communicate to their children. You know, I just believe you're, you're as scatterbrained as you can be. That you're undependable. Guess what? If you're constantly saying things like this, uh, so even though they're subconsciously, by the little things you do, by the questions you ask, by the, the way you relate to this child, they will prove you right. They will. Children pick up on those things. So it's important that you have a vision. What, how do you see this child? What do you want this child to accomplish? On the other hand, if you say to the child things, if you have a vision of this child as being someone that's going to be important, someone that's going to be uh, uh, dependable, and you maybe subconsciously or as your response to them, you're constantly affirming them and you're saying things to, to them like that, I believe you're intelligent, you know, or you're, as you respond to what they're doing, I, I see you as a person that's faithful to God. I see you as a person that's dependable. Well, guess what? You know, they're going to take on those roles. They're going to hear you, and they will begin to mold their life in that direction. Self-fulfilling prophecy is a fact. It's a reality. It happens. And so what I'm saying to you this morning, mothers especially, you need to envision what do you want this child to be. Because as you have in your mind, I see this child as someone that's, that's uh, following God, is responding to God, being all God wants them to be. Through the subconscious ways, through body language, through little things, you will communicate that to them. They will pick up on it and it will change their lives. And obviously the other side is true. If you don't have that vision, if you don't see them as someone that's capable, someone that's going to become what God wants them to be, they will pick up on that as well. So this morning, what's a mother to do? I, I believe you need to make it your goal to, to teach and to instruct in the way God would have you to. And you can look at the Bible and find out what that is. But then you need to have a, a, a vision. You need to envision what that child is going to become. And then finally, as we think about, well, what's a mother to do? I think uh, the last thing that I would share with you this morning as a mother uh, thinking about uh, raising a child would be that mothers must be committed to the commitment of being a mother. Mothers must be committed to the commitment of being a mother. And you may say, well, I don't know. What do you mean? Well, let me share with you. When, you know, you ask the question, when is a mother's work finished? <laughs> when is it finished? Well, it really never ends, does it? In Proverbs 31.10, we studied that in Sunday school. I don't know if all of you did today, but uh, Proverbs 31.10, that famous quote, uh, the question, a wife of noble character, who can find? She is worth far more than rubies. And the writer of Proverbs is sharing with us a truth. As he talks about the wife in this context, he's talking about not only a wife of a husband, but a mother as well. And, and he's posing a question, and he, he's saying, you know, a, a person who is a wife and a mother and is committed to the whole family, uh, they're certainly uh, a rarity. And, and so the question is valid this morning. But here's the point. You can be that person. You know, the scripture doesn't just ask that question, you know, in, in thin air and, and with no purpose. There's the challenge there. You can be that person. You can be a wife and mother who is committed to the whole family and, and can make a difference in their life. You can be that person. And I know this morning as we talked about that passage of Scripture, a lot of people seem to think it was, you know, it's almost a pie in the sky kind of thing. You know, who could be like that? But the reality is what we're talking about in that passage of Scripture is a committed mother, a person committed to being a mother. And so this morning I would encourage you uh, to do that. I read John Maxwell a long time ago when he was talking about uh, commitment. He wrote an article about commitment, and I, I really thought it was insightful. He said, and I put that in your worship guide, he said, commitment is usually discovered in the midst of adversity. You know, and so when I talk to you this morning about mothers 
of being committed to the commitment of being a mother, uh, it's not something you're going to discover. <laughs> you know, it's, it's not that you say, well, whoa, I have all these problems as a, as a mother trying to raise this child and, and uh, all these struggles develop commitment. No, that's... It's not what Maxwell said, and I believe he's right. He said commitment is usually discovered in the midst of adversity. It's not that the adversity creates commitment. It's that you will discover commitment in the midst of adversity. The, the adversity will reveal whether or not you are committed. So I would say to you mothers this morning, you need to make a commitment to being a committed mother. And if you'll do that, regardless of what happens, it will come through, it will shine through that you've made a commitment. You want to be all the mother you can be, the best mother you can be, and it'll be obvious when the struggle begins to come. Maxwell said, commitment does not depend on gifts and abilities. And I'm so thankful for that this morning. And I, I would assume that you are this morning. That, you know, when we talk about commitment, we realize that every mother is different. You know, some have natural abilities in this area and some have natural abilities in, in another area. Uh, but commitment is not dependent upon a mother's gifts and abilities. It's got nothing to do with that. Whether or not you're committed, it doesn't matter if you're the most talented person in a particular area or not. You know, commitment is different from that. So this morning, when I say that you need to make a commitment to being uh, a committed mother, then I'm not talking about how much ability you have. Uh, we're talking about something quite different. Commitment results from choices, not conditions. So this morning, you know, as we think about that, Frederick Flack uh, mentioned a long time ago, he said that when you think about commitment, most people, if they have commitment in their life, they can point back to a specific time when with their heart of hearts or with their will, they made a decision, I will be committed. And so what I'm sharing with you this morning is I think you need to make a commitment to being the best mother you can be. You need to make a commitment to say, by God's grace, I will be a godly mother. By God's grace, I will be what God wants me to be. And you make a commitment to that. And, and usually you can look back to a specific time and place when you made that commitment. When with your will, you said, I, I will do that. Now, I'm obviously not a mother. But I can remember as a parent, when I was 21 years old and I had a, a little girl that wasn't very old and, and God was dealing with me about recommitment of my life. And, and I remember the, the connection between his impression upon me that I need to be committed to him and my awareness that I was the father of a small child who deserved to have a father who was dependent upon Jesus Christ. And I remember that specifically. And so what I'm saying to you this morning, there needs to be a time in your life when you come to a place and you say as a mother, I will, by God's grace, do whatever it takes to be the mother God wants me to be. You need to make a commitment to being a committed mother. And it's not the, it's not the result of conditions. It's the fact that you make that decision. I want to be. I will. You choose to be a committed person. And then Maxwell said commitment lasts when it's based on values. You see, values are those things that are important to you. You know, what's important to you? That's your values. Uh, you can say all kinds of things, but when push comes to shove, how you respond tells us what your values are. And, and those values drive your choices. You're going to choose uh, to do things based on what your values are. And so this morning, that's why it begins with a commitment to God. If you're going to be the mother God wants you to be, you have to make a commitment to God. You have to say, I want to be all God wants me to be. If that's important to you, if that's a value in your life, then it's going to drive uh, many other things. If that's not in place first, you may say, I want to be a good mother. I want to be uh, you know, a mother that makes a difference in my child. You can say all kinds, but it'll be smoke if you have not first made that commitment to God. To say, I want to be a godly mother. I want to be what God wants me to be. Commitment based on anything else than solid values. It's just a house of cards. You know, you can, you can be a mother. You can do all kinds of things. But if, if you don't have solid values, I, I, I really want to be all God wants me to be. I want to 
be the best mother I can be. If you don't have values that are driving those choices, whatever you do, it's going to fall apart. It's not going to matter. I see children regularly that are out in the world, and you know, as long as they're home, they're, um, you know, they do what their parents are telling them that they need to do. But as soon as they get out on their own, it's a completely different world. Why? Well, you know, somehow there was a falsity there. They, they didn't see the reality in that home. You know, uh, we need to teach values, and we need to help those children develop their own values that are consistent with God's Word. And then when they get out on the road, they're going to make choices based on their values just like you do. So this morning, what Maxwell was saying I think is important. Commitment lasts when it's based on values. So this morning... What's a mother to do? I would encourage you first to be what you promised God that you would be. And what did you promise him? When you came to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, what did you say to him? You know, I, I don't know the specific words that you used, but in, in some form, you no doubt recognized he was God, that he's the Savior, that he died for you, that he's you know, King of kings and Lord of lords. You, in some way, you indicated that he was supreme and you were not. Now, I would assume that somewhere along the way there you said to him, I'll follow you. You know, I'll be what you want me to be. You know, this morning, if you're going to be the mother God wants you to be, you need to do what you promised God that you would do. In other words, you need to try to instruct those children in the ways that God would have them instructed. Then you need to envision what the child's become and regularly seek God's instruction in doing all you can to bring it to pass. And you know, as you do this, the reality is the child may not turn out exactly like you envision. You know, I know I'm speaking, you know, I'm saying you need to do these things, and, and Proverbs says, train up a child in ways to go. I realize that sometimes you can do all that you can do, uh, and, and the child won't turn out exactly like you envision it to be. And why is that? Well, you're not the only influence in the child's life, are you? You know, fathers, unfortunately, <laughs> sometimes are an influence. Society is an influence. There's a lot of other influences in life. But here's the thing. As a mother, you want to know that you've done everything you could to point that child in the way it should go. You want to know that, that you did everything. And so regardless of how the child turns out, you know, if it turns out good, great, that's awesome. But if, if the child has struggles and problems, you know, you want to know in your heart of hearts, I was trying to do all I knew to do. And this morning, that's all God asked anybody to do. It really is. He doesn't ask us to be something we're not. He doesn't ask us to do something we cannot do. He asks us to do what we know to be best. But listen this morning, He does ask you to do that. And so the question is, when we think about what's a mother to do, have you committed yourself to being the best mother you can be? Are you seriously trying to find out what God wants you to teach that child and instill that in the child? Do you envision uh, something for that child that's positive and good? You know, are you being the mother that you can be? God doesn't expect you to do something you can't but he does inspect, expect you to do what you can. Your ch children won't be perfect, but listen this morning, they will be better. They will be better because you've attempted to be the mother that God wanted you to be. This morning, the question comes, you know, we ask ourselves, you know, are, are you a Christian? Do you really... Um, do you believe in God? Do you believe that, that Jesus is returning again? You know, this morning, it's not just for mothers this morning, but it's also for fathers, for sisters, for brothers, for all of us, all men, women, boys, and girls. You know, we need to think about this morning the fact that the Lord is returning. And if you're a believer in Jesus Christ, or if you're not this morning, you need to, to deal with that question. In Jeremiah chapter 5, verses 30, 31, the scripture records something that I think is, is just um, right as, as current as today. He says, a horrible and shocking thing has happened in the land. The prophets prophesy lies and the priests rule by their own authority. And my people love it this way. Then he asks a question. But what will you do 
in the end. The reality this morning is, mothers, do you believe that Jesus is coming again? Do you believe that one day every one of us is going to give an account of the life that we've lived? Not just mothers, but every one of us this morning. Do you believe that? Well, even though this, this morning our world is teaching all kinds of things. I know, you know, people are saying things. Sometimes society certainly is saying uh, everything needs to be different. We're old fogies. We're out of tune. We need to take a different approach. All this. Sometimes even the church says that. Sometimes leaders say that. But, but what does God's word say? You know, the reality is, regardless of what others are saying, one day Jesus is going to return. One day we're going to stand before him and give an account. And at that time, you want to be able to say, Lord Jesus, I tried. I tried to discover what you wanted me to teach them. I had a vision for what that child should become, a godly person, someone that you would be pleased with. I was committed to being all I could be as a mother. I don't know what the child will be or how the child will turn out. That's not the point. God's going to be concerned with you where you're willing to do all you could do. And that's not just true of mothers this morning. That's true of all of us. So this morning as we come to this time of invitation and we think about, you know, what should mothers do? Certainly they're uh, challenged this morning, but it's not just mothers, but those of us that are past that and others that are past that. You know, we have an opportunity to help others and, and fathers and sons. We all need to think about what does God want us to do? And this morning, we need to ask the question, am I right now being obedient to the leading of God? In this invitation, God is speaking. He is impressing upon you what he wants you to do. And the question is, are you willing to say yes to him? That's what it's all about this morning. Are you willing to say yes to him? If you're here as a mother, he's going to lead you. If you're here as a father, he's going to lead you. If you're here as a, as a young person, he's going to lead you. But this morning, the question is, are we willing to do what he's asking us to do. One day he's coming again. Maybe today. One day we're going to give an account. Are we doing what we know to do? Just a moment I'm going to pray. Aaron's going to come and sing. The deacons will be here at the front. This is an opportunity for you to say yes to God. I want to encourage you this morning. If you're here as a mother, you know, I know God has spoken to your heart. If you're here as a person that can influence mothers, God has spoken to your heart. If you're just here this morning, God is saying some thanks to you. The question is, are we willing to obey? I want to encourage you as I pray this morning, say yes to him. He loves you. He's encouraging you to do what's best for your life. Say yes to him. Let's pray together. Father, thank you this morning for an opportunity to, to share with mothers. And Lord, I just pray that each of us might become students of your word, that we might look deeply into it and discover what you would have us to do. And Lord, may we then be committed to being that person you want us to be. Father, in this invitation, I don't know what you're speaking to people about, but I do know you're speaking and I know you're encouraging and, and impressing about your will. Lord, it's my prayer this morning that if there's someone here without Jesus, that they'll realize that they need to come and receive him. If there's a mother here that, that you've spoken to about a new direction, uh, Lord, they need to yield to that and make that commitment to be that. Maybe today would be the day when, when they, with their heart of hearts, make that commitment to you. Lord, there may be other things going on, but whatever you're saying today, it's my prayer that as we hear you, that we will each one say yes to you. And Lord, if we need to come forward in this invitation, help us to do that. If it's something we can do where we are, that's fine. But Lord, whatever you want, Speak clearly to us and help us to obey. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand together. Brother Aaron is going to lead us in our invitation to him. Whatever God wants you to do, let's obey him today. Just as I am without one but that thy blood was
morning, if you're here as a mother, we praise you. We really do. I, I certainly do. I appreciate mothers. I know the influence that they have. But I want to encourage you this morning. As God has spoken to you, I hope that you will make the commitment to not just be a mother, but to be the mother God wants you to be. And we as fathers, as others, we need to pray for those that are engaged in raising children. They have a tremendous task. They have a wonderful opportunity. Let's pray for them that they will be all that God wants them to be. And if you still, I, I put in a worship guide, if you still have a mother living, today you certainly need to affirm her and let her know that you love her. Be sure and do that. It's been good to be in the Lord's house today. Let's be dismissed in prayer. Father, we thank you so much for your love for mothers that you've given us. And Lord, I just pray that you'll help each of us to be uh, appreciative of those mothers that you've given us. And Lord, uh, for those mothers that are here today, I just pray that as you've spoken to their heart, that they have renewed that commitment, made a commitment to, to hang in there, to be that worthy mother you've called them to be. And Father, I pray that each one of us will be supportive of them and encouraging of them as they uh, attempt to be uh, that person you've called them to be. And Lord, you know the other needs that are here today. And whatever it is, I just pray that each of us have yielded to you. And if we haven't done that today, I pray before this day's over that, Lord, we'll make that decision for you. Just go with us as we depart from this place. We ask it all in the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you.